Hello YouTube, Jeff Steele here. Today's video topic is the latest update and other news information on the ammo and firearm shortages in the U.S. as well as information on Joe Biden and the left's gun law proposals. I'm going to go through, this is going to be off of his website as well as some other news websites I'm going to highlight. In regards to ammunition shortages, we're still still dealing with the eight plus million new gun owners since last spring, 2020. To the best of my knowledge, there have been no new factories built. So current facilities are still trying to keep up with demand. And they are, I would say they're doing a subpar job at that. They're apparently doing all they can do, but at the end of the day, we need more production facilities built for operations and that just has not happened. So we're gonna to continue to see shortages, shortages as of now. Some of my local retailers, independent dealers that specialize in only ammunition and firearms, they have limited their days of operation as far as opening to the public to about three to four days versus they were open five to six days a week before simply because the, the traffic is so heavily and they just don't have the inventory. So people are just basically showing up, asking questions and hanging around talking. And basically they're gonna limit their days of opening. So when they are open, they're just conducting transactions primarily. Big box stores, Walmart, Academy, still completely out. Uh, I've heard no further news on that. A couple weeks ago, I gave an update that sometimes you would see oddball things such as 25-06, 28-gauge. Now we're not seeing any of that whatsoever. I would say if you're really looking for inventory, I would reach out to friends, family, anybody, cold, make cold calls. As somebody you might know someone that knows someone. And I will say that, for example, if you have more than 4,000 rounds of a given item, especially rimfire, they just don't have a long shelf life. So maybe you can look at selling those items or if you're in the, look at to look in the market to sell firearms as well, it's absolutely a seller's market right now. Now, just be upfront with your buyer. Hey, I am making a little profit on this, just so you know. But just know, I mean, rimfire just does not have a long shelf life like centerfire. Once your powder gets moisture to it, it's done. It is absolutely done. I'm not sure if anybody has experience with wet powder out there, but literally it will look like a Roman candle comes out the end of your barrel, if anything. And the projectile may stay in the barrel or it might just roll out of the barrel. So if you, if you have something to sell, definitely sell it as soon as possible. And with what you do have, I would definitely ration it and I would avoid using it at all costs. Look at other upgrades you can do. Look at upgrading magazines, optics, slings. Look at reducing the weight on your, on your items. That's, that's another tip. So, I mean, you can save a lot of weight just by changing out grips, forearms. And people talk about weapons lights. I'm very against weapons lights because it adds weight to your unit but most importantly, it gives away your location. You want the location of your target. You don't want your target to know your location. And when you switch that light on, you instantly give away your location. Even if it blinds them, they still can see their target. So think about that. And some broad news updates. Inflation is running rampant. I don't know if anybody's noticed, we're gonna look at oil as an example. Ever since Joe Biden was inaugurated, oil has done nothing but climb. I filled up my old Jeep Cherokee right before he was inaugurated. I think it cost me about $46 with Super 93. And this past week I filled up and it was almost $58 for Super 93. That's just an example on gasoline. Many people predict inflation at 20 to 25%. That's the real rate. That's not the rate the government's gonna tell you because they don't wanna they don't wanna start a panic. But what you need to do is not hold so much cash. Look at hard assets and things that will absolutely retain their value. Super critical. 
Bitcoin is right around $50,000, by the way. That's another item that folks are moving cash into to try to hedge themselves against inflation. And I would argue that you need to be proactive every day instead of reactive. Everything you do every day it needs to be absolutely in your conscious forethought of mind. Don't be reacting to things. Be absolutely proactive in every area of your life. Now, on to the left and Joe Biden's gun laws. I saw this on a Apple News feed this past Sunday. It said, Biden calls on Congress to enact common sense gun laws, reforms on the third anniversary of the Parkland shooting. Now, we, we are all aware that the left and, and Joe Biden in particular, they really want to focus on the Second Amendment and what they can do while they have uh, over 50% majority, the Kamala being the deal breaker, and they can really get some things done. So, elections are over with, but what you can do is each and every one of you can call your representatives every day, multiple times a day, as much as you possibly can. Inundate the phone lines with how you feel about them encroaching on the Second Amendment and weakening, weakening it in any way, shape, or form. That's something you can absolutely do. Even if they're busy 10 times a day, call 15 times a day, call 20 times a day. But on Sunday, this is on CNN, Joe Biden called on Congress to institute common sense gun law reforms, including widespread firearm sales, background checks, and a ban on assault weapons. And real quick on that, a ban on assault weapons. Well, your military, who he has full control on, they're not going to have a ban on their assault weapons. So why should the public have a ban on their weapons? That should absolutely concern you. They're not going to take the military's assault means away. Why would they take the public's? It says, banning assault weapons and high capacity magazines and eliminating immunity for gun manufacturers who knowingly put weapons of war on our streets. It says, this administration will not wait for the next mass shooting to heed that call. It says, we will take action to end our epidemic of gun violence and make our schools and communities safer. And it's just broadly talking about what they're going to do and some past information. Now let's go to Joe Biden's personal website, JoeBiden.com. And he has a lot of information. It says the Biden plan to end our gun violence epidemic. First thing, I want to sort of read this bullet point and sort of summarize for you. Hold gun manufacturers accountable. It says this law protects these manufacturers from being held civilly liable for their products, a protection granted to no other industry. Biden will prioritize repealing this protection. Get weapons of war off our streets. It says ban the manufacture and sale of assault weapons in high capacity magazines. It says federal law prevents hunters from hunting migratory game birds with more than three shells in their shotgun. That means our federal law does more to protect ducks than children. Joe Biden will enact legislation to once again ban assault weapons. This time, the bans will be designed based on lessons learned from the 94 bans. For example, the ban on assault weapons will be designed to prevent manufacturers from circumventing the law by making minor changes that don't limit the weapon's lethality. While working to pass this legislation, Biden will also use his executive authority to ban the importation of assault weapons. regulate possession of existing assault weapons under the National Firearms Act. It says currently the act requires individuals possessing machine gun silencers and short barreled rifles to undergo a background check and register with the Bureau of ATF. 
Due to these requirements, such weapons are rarely used in crimes. Says also, he wants to buy back the assault weapons in high capacity magazines already in our communities. Biden will also institute a program to buy back weapons of war currently on our streets. This will give individuals who now possess assault weapons or high capacity magazines two options, sell the weapons to the government or register them under the National Firearms Act. And in a previous video, I talked about this. I think it was in 1997, the country of Australia did the same thing. Now what they did was they implemented a new tax, a new Medicare tax to fund this program. And they said, oh, well, after the program is done, we're gonna remove the tax. Well, after the program was done, they never removed the tax. Taxes remained higher and they never took it away and they got everybody's guns. So they got more money and they got everybody's guns. And also what they would do, if you turned in a weapon, they would assess it, apply a value, give you a ticket. Then that weapon and the other copy of the ticket would be shipped off to a processing facility. And oftentimes that unit was damaged in transit. And by the time it got to processing, they would send back a notice saying, oh, well, we originally estimated this item at $600. Well, it's in bad condition. So we're only gonna give you 300. And at that point, there's nothing you can do. You already signed the papers. Very bad. And many of my friends have said, well, if that happens, I'm just going to go and buy up everybody's gear. And I don't give them more than the government's going to give them. Well, the problem is most individuals that are going to be selling their goods to the government, they're not in your network. They're just not going to be. And so you might get one or two if you're lucky, friend of a friend sort of thing. But that's just not an option. But that's what they'll do. They'll implement a tax, increase your taxes to pay for it. And then once they're done buying everybody's stockpiles, they'll keep your taxes higher. It says he also wants to reduce stockpiling of weapons in order to reduce, it says, restricting the number of firearms an individual may purchase to one per month. Now, I, I doubt he's going to restrict the military to purchasing one per month. They're purchasing millions per month. Think about that. So he wants to take your firearms away, but he's not saying anything about taking his military's firearms away. When he has, he is a commander in chief, he has total control over that. It says, keep guns out of dangerous hands. The federal background check system, the national instant criminal background check system is one of the best tools we had to prevent gun violence, but it's only effective when it's used. Biden will enact universal background check legislation and close other loopholes that allow people who should be prohibited from purchasing firearms from making those pur purchases. And he goes into detail about that. Require background checks for all gun sales. He says only one in five firearms sold today require or go through such checks. It says close other loopholes in the federal check says that he will reinstate the Obama-Biden policy to keep guns out of the hands of certain people unable to manage their affairs for mental reasons, which President Trump reversed. So what that means is, I think approximately, up, I think it's somewhere around up to 40% of U.S. citizens are on some type of SSRI. I think it's close to that number. It's, it's close to 40%, which is significant. What they'll do in this situation is they'll say, oh, well, you have a prescription to Zoloft or, or some type of other SSRI, or you're, you say you're not even on a prescription. Say you're seeing a, a therapist because you're having some issues. You need to talk some things out. They'll say, well, you're seeing a therapist. Well, you're not mentally stable, so you're not going to be able to have firearms rights. So that will be a rabbit hole there. Or they might say, well, you got divorced seven years ago, so you have some issues. They'll just really run down a rabbit hole with that. It 
says, close the hate crime loophole. This is Biden will enact legislation prohibiting an individual who has been convicted of a misdemeanor hate crime or received an enhanced sentence for a misdemeanor because of hate or bias in its commission from purchasing or possessing a firearm. So, for example, you could be driving down the road, get in an argument with somebody, hang the middle finger outside your, your window. That is considered a hate crime in, in many jurisdictions. And they can take your firearms rights away for that one gesture. That's an example of that. It says, close the Charleston loophole, which allows people to complete a firearms purchase if their background check is not completed within three business days. And in regards to the individuals that shouldn't have firearms, I mean, for example, convicted felons that supposedly have lost their firearms rights, for example, I'm, I'm here to tell you all that professional criminals, they do not care what laws are written, how they're written, who wrote them. They go by their own rules, laws, and regulations. So that's not going to stop those individuals any way, shape, or form. If, if anything... It will only increase their activity in the areas where these laws are active. Because in that situation, they will know the public and the law-abiding citizens don't have a proper means to defend themselves. So it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel, as it were. I would encourage you all to look at the city of Kennesaw, Georgia where they have a local mandate or ordinance law whereby every homeowner, I think, and or business owner must own a firearm. Look at that town and look at their crime rates compared to, say, Chicago, who has some of the strictest firearms laws and some of the highest crime rates. Prime example. It says, in the online sale of firearms and ammunitions, Biden will enact legislation to, pro to prohibit all online sales of firearms, ammunition, kits, and gun parts. Create an effective program to ensure individuals who become prohibited from possessing firearms relinquish their weapons. Let's see how he's going to do that. Federal law defines categories of individuals who are prohibited of purchasing or possessing firearms. It says we lack a serious tool to ensure that when someone becomes newly prohibited, for example, they commit a violent crime, they relinquish possession of their firearms. There are some promising models of how this could be enforced. For example, California has a mandatory process for ensuring relinquishment by any individual newly subject to a domestic violence restraining order. And that, for what could be classified as a domestic violence restraining order, that could be a pushing and shoving match between yourself and your significant other. That could fall under this category and they can take your firearms for it. says they will provide technical and financial assistance. Again, where are they going to get the finances? They're going to increase your taxes. Or they'll simply print more money, and they will, which will cause more inflation and make the value of your spending power go down. It says incentivize state, incentivize state extreme risk laws. Extreme risk laws, also called red flag laws, enable family members of law enforcement officials to temporarily remove an individual's access to firearms when that individual is in crisis or poses a danger to themselves or others. It says, give states incentives to set up gun licensing programs. It says, we'll give Government's grants to require individuals to obtain a license prior to purchasing a gun.
adequately, adequately fund the background check system. Again, increase your taxes. Establish new task force on online harassment and abuse to focus on the connection between that and mass shootings. Make sure firearm owners take on the responsibility of ensuring their weapons are used and stored safely. Put America on the path to ensuring that 100% of firearms sold in America are smart guns. It says today we have the technology to allow only authorized users to fire a gun. For example, existing smart gun technology requires a fingerprint match before use. Biden believes we should work to eventually require that 100% of firearms sold in the U.S. are smart guns. Hold adults accountable for giving minors access to firearms. Require gun owners to safely store their weapons. Empower law enforcement to effectively enforce our gun laws. Again, that goes back to he's not taking the military or the police officer's firepower didn't say anything about that, only street citizens. Prioritize prosecution of straw purchasers. Basically individuals that buy firearms for individuals who will not go through the background check themselves or themselves have re restricted firearms. Notify law enforcement when a potential firearms purchaser fails a background check, which they do not do, I don't believe. Require firearms owners to report if their weapon is lost or stolen. I would say most people do that already if they own the gun legally and the gun is not stolen because most people can, one way or another, claim that under insurance and they definitely want to get their money back. Stop ghost guns. One way people who cannot legally obtain a gun may gain access to a weapon by assembling one on their own, either buying a kit, such as buying a lower or an upper, disassembling gun or parts, 3D printing, a working firearm. Biden will stop the proliferation of these so-called ghost guns by passing legislation requiring that purchasers of gun kits or 3D printing code pass a federal background check. This is a lot longer than I was anticipating. This video is going long, over 23 minutes. I just want to cover everything that's on his website. Reform, fund, and empower the U.S. Justice Department to enforce our gun laws, which means boots on the ground, representatives at your door. Direct the ATF to issue an annual report on firearms trafficking. This report will provide officials with critical information to better identify strategies for curbing firearms trafficking. Dedicate the brightest scientific minds to solving the gun violence public health epidemic. What about the diabetes epidemic? What about the cancer epidemic? Prohibit the use of federal funds to arm or train educators to discharge firearms. Address the epidemic of suicides by firearms. Make federal programs more trauma-informed. Create a network of trauma care centers. And last on the list is train healthcare and other service providers in trauma-centered care. All this sounds like is more and more infringement on Second Amendment, and they will do so by increasing your taxes, taking away your, your rights, restricting you more so. And I'm just pulling up the Second Amendment here for you. 
and what it says. Constitution of the United States of America, 1789. The Second Amendment. This is exactly what it says. A well-regulated militia, which is which means a militia, which means the people, citizens on the ground, non-military, non-law enforcement. That is what composes a militia. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed in any way, shape, or form. I added the any way, shape, or form on. But let me reread that to you. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I will, quote, I will quote one of our founding fathers. I think it was Thomas Jefferson. A government should fear its people, its people that it represents. The people should not fear its government. Now, if they take all of your guns away, and only the government's military has the assault weapons and all the other weapons. I mean, how's that going to make you feel? And just to give you another example, and I'm going to, I'm going to close this video out, but with the attack on Pearl Harbor, a lot of the Japanese generals and, and other administrators, they were asked, hey, you had such a successful hit on Pearl Harbor why did you not follow up that hit with mainland U.S. strikes? And their main reason for that was because they knew that the U.S. was the largest standing army in the world, specifically the continental U.S., because most citizens are gun owners and definitely were at that time. So that was their main reason for not following up that attack after Pearl Harbor on the mainland. So think about that for a second. They take everybody's guns or restrict them so bad that you don't want to deal with it. That's just going to open us up to further attacks one way or another. So think about that. If you really like to support the channel, you can subscribe. You can share this video. You can hit, hit the thumbs up button and check out all the other videos on the channel. We try to bring a lot of value. We'll keep these updates coming along. Do what you can. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.